welcome back to Rich Summers Art. My name is Rich, my passion is helping you get excited about painting, and today I'm going to show you how for less than 20 bucks, you too can start painting. I found this acrylic starter kit from US Art Supply on Amazon for about $15. I bought one to see if we can do a decent painting with just the basics. The kit came with three basic bristle brushes, a number two, a number four, and a number six. Not the greatest brushes, but for somebody just beginning, an inexpensive way to get going. I grabbed a paper plate to use as a mixing palette, which most anyone will have in the pantry. And the kit came with this small plastic tray, which I'll use to hold my colors that will mix on the plate. There are six tubes of acrylic paint with the kit. Lamp black, vermilion red, sap green, cerulean blue, lemon yellow, and titanium white. I filled the plastic solo cup with water, grabbed a paper towel for wiping out my brushes, a number two pencil to do a quick sketch, and I've got the eight by 10 canvas board set up on the small tabletop easel, both which came with the kit. So let's see if we can create a decent painting for less than $20. I start out with a basic landscape sketch that could be just about anywhere in the Western United States. There's a mountain range, with a stream running through the field and uh, we'll put in some trees and some scenery. And then we'll start blocking in the sky. We'll use a little cerulean blue, a little titanium white and some of the yellow just to warm that color up a little bit. The titanium white opaques the colors because acrylics are very transparent for the most part. And if you use that white, it helps opaque that color and cover your canvas a little better. While we got that color on the brush that we're using in the sky, Let's go down and block in our stream as well, just to kind of act as a placeholder for where that stream's gonna run through the painting there. And starting with the mountain farthest away from us, we're gonna use a very light color, just a little bit darker than the sky, but not too dark, because we want the perception of distance. It gives you some depth in the painting. So you can see that looks like that's way back there. And we're gonna go a little bit darker. Down there in the valley, there'll be some shadows. And then we're going to move forward to the next mountain with a little darker value. Not too much darker. And we're going to put some other stuff on there a little later that will darken that up even more. So we don't want to get too dark right now or it'll mess up the depth of your painting and the values on your planes. And then we'll go a little darker for the mountain range that's closer to us. So far, not too bad with this little inexpensive paint kit for 15 bucks. Start working a little bit on the foreground now. Just wanting to get the canvas board covered with paint right now with the basic colors. We'll add all the details and highlights and things coming up in just a little bit here. Okay, let's clean out the brush and then grab a little red, just a little bit, mix with some titanium white. Just want a nice pink color really light pink. You don't want to make your clouds too white or it looks chalky. So we add a little color in there to lay in the clouds. Such a big area up there and we don't want the blue to dominate the painting. Collect a little more color into the water. It's a good idea to move around in the painting. While one area dries you can go work on another area. Let's grab a little of that pink color and put a few highlights on the mountain that's farthest from us. Gives the appearance of snow on the mountaintop. Looks like that's way back there. And keep in mind that acrylics tend to dry darker than they look when you first put them on, which is why we keep going back over some of these areas with some color. Take the number four brush and take some of our darker color and put in the reflections of that mountain range that's closest to us in the water. And we'll do some horizontal strokes to make it look like the stream is flowing instead of going up and down. Thinking the light is coming in from the left side of the painting. So we're gonna add some shadows to the back side of that middle mountain range. And you can see now that the middle mountain range and the range closest to us are almost the same value, which is not good, but we're gonna go in there and lighten up that closest range with some highlights, like the sun is hitting the face of that mountain there, coming in again from the left side of the painting.
Acrylics tend to dry really fast, especially if you're in a warm area, sunlight or warm studio lights. So I have a misting bottle that I use just to keep the canvas board or my canvas a little bit wet. Makes it easier to push the paint around. You'll see me spray the canvas board here in just a second or so, just to keep that paint pliable and able to move around the canvas. Now we're going to mix some lighter colors, start putting some highlights in in the foreground, the vegetation, the bushes, using the yellow, a little red, a little green, and a little black to kind of bring it into that yellow ochre range. We'll lay in the grasses along the creek bed, or the creek bank rather, closer to us on the left side there. Helps act as an eye stopper. It keeps the composition of the painting where the eye flows around the painting instead of off the painting. Mix in a little red, a little green, a little black. Make kind of a burnt sienna color. Put in the foreground. We'll go back to the smaller brush and start highlighting the vegetation and the trees and the shrubs and bushes on the opposite side of the creek. Add a little more definition to these pine trees right here behind this row of trees and shrubs and bushes that are closest to the creek just to add some interest to the painting. I'm going to mix up a lighter color now and start highlighting even more along the bank of the creek and the trees and the grasses. Again, acrylics dry darker so you have to keep going back over them to get the value that you want. Well, we got that color, let's brighten up that mountain a little bit and start laying in the foreground on the area on the left side of the creek. Just working quickly to block in that color. Build up that shadow along that creek bank. Go back to our water color and put a little more highlighting on the water and you'll see the dark reflection from the first mountain range that's closest to us, when you put that other color in, you can see how nice that looks. Using the tip of the pencil, because the brushes that came with the kit aren't really very detail oriented to uh, get that little white line farthest back, you can use that or you could use the back end of the brush like I'm doing there to add the indication of some ripples and some water flowing there along the creek bank. And we're going to add in some light here on the left bank to give the perception of sun coming through the pine trees. Highlighting some areas on the foreground there. Using that same color, we've got to go back across and brighten up the grasses on the other side again. You have to keep adding those layers of color in, otherwise everything gets kind of flat looking because acrylics, again, dry darker than when you put them on the painting. Using that same color, going to highlight the trees, the pine trees. A little more highlight on the mountain. Work on the creek a little more with some more color. Creates movement perception of light. There we go again, highlighting more on the bank, <laughs> keeping that color, trying to, trying to keep that bank bright. Brightening up the light coming through the trees a little bit. It's moving around, no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing, just making it look like light coming through the trees. Let's block in the foreground here a little bit, give us something to look at. bringing that color up in the foreground before we start adding a little more color to it. Back to the highlighting. Bring up 
some of that foreground again with that same color. Not too much though. I want the foreground to overpower the rest of the painting. And then we're going to mix up kind of a purple color. A few wildflowers in. That's a little, little interest to the foreground and the far bank of the creek. Brighten up those highlights again. Put an eye stopper on the other side of the painting. A little more color in the creek. Touch that snow-capped mountain way back there in the distance. And let's, let's brighten up that bank again. Really want to keep that bright across the creek there. So it looks like the sun is coming across, hitting that. Mixing up a brighter color now and highlighting those flowers. And I think we just about got a painting done for less than 20 bucks. There you go. So we just created that quick 8x10 landscape painting using that beginner kit from US Art Supply available on Amazon.com for $15. There's a link to purchase one just like it in the description below. And when you shop through Amazon.com and our store, it helps us out, keeps the channel going. If you like what you see today, please subscribe, hit the like button, ring that bell for notifications. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Rich Summers Arts.